allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Folks, if everyone can please remain standing for a moment, we're going to uh, recognize um, Dan Balthasari, the uh, 2015 Colts Neck High School graduate uh, who lost his life recently in an airplane accident serving in the United States Marine Corps. Thank you. There will be a, a memorial service at Colts Neck High School football field uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m. honoring Dan. Pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Public Laws of 1975, this meeting has been duly advertised in the Asbury Park Press, issue of June 16, 2016. All municipal clerks of the townships and boroughs within the regional high school district have been duly notified, and all the requirements of posting of notices have been met. Approval of the minutes. Any questions? A motion? Motion. Second. Any questions? Was that second action? Uh, uh, Pete. Pete, okay. Mrs. Canario? Here. Uh, uh, vote on the minutes. Yeah. Oh, I abstain. I'm sorry. So I guess I'm not paying attention. Mr. Carollo? Yes. Mrs. Fankhauser? Abstain. Mrs. Lavin? Yes. Mr. Messinger? Yes. Mr. Moses? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mrs. Terra? Yes. <clears throat> Communications are maintained in the file office of the board secretary. Um, superintendent's report. All right, so um, very busy summer so far. We haven't uh, been here since the end of June, so uh, in the intervening several weeks, we've We've initiated a number of transitions. So Dr. Taylor has trans transitioned to the Special Services Department. Ms. Howe has transitioned to curriculum instruction. Uh, and, and those transitions have gone very seamlessly. Brian Donahue has started over at Colts Neck High School as the principal. So uh, we're off and running for the summer. We had an awesome uh, retreat a few weeks back uh, based on uh, Adam Grant's work originals. One of the things we did as an administrative team is we actually had um, sort of a shark tank innovation challenge where uh, the admins were assigned to random teams, had to pitch each other ideas that would benefit the school in, in some manner, had some real tight timelines around it, and then over the course of the day, we narrowed down the ideas, and then ultimately the room selected one idea that we would take a look at uh, and, 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 and move forward with. So um, it was an excellent day. It was a highly engaged day, and I was, I was really, um, you know, left feeling really good about the admin team here and, 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 and the work that we were, we were all engaged in. Um, we've had two meetings so far uh, with the principals to talk about the, the school goals for next year and, and, and accompanying action plans. So uh, that work is, is underway in, in, in earnest. An awful lot of work going on around the infrastructure of the, the district. Um, obviously, you have the track uh, the, and turf project at Howe High School that's going uh, according to schedule and going very well. Uh, looks incredible over there. Um, but there's an awful lot of other work going on throughout the district. We're renovating a couple of the media center areas, a number of computer labs. And one of the things that we're doing across the district that um, I'm excited about is, is, is painting a number of accent walls in the, in, in the rooms you know, to brighten up the, the, the classroom experience for students. And it's a little thing, but um, to sit in a, in, in a room that looks, you know, sort of four by four institutional um, is not exactly stimulating anyone. Uh, and I think to uh, take some, some real bright colors and we used research that corroborates student learning to select three, three colors that we really went with to, to start painting those, those walls. So that work is underway. Um, also excited to, to note that uh, Dr. Sharp and I were, were accepted to uh, present at the uh, FAE, FEA and JPSA and JA, 
um, ASCD conference in the fall on the work that we've done around the Aspiring Administrators Academy and cultivating our own leaders here in the district. I think that um, you know one of the one of the tenets of our strategic plan was really to you know develop processes to. Uh, provide leadership opportunities for the folks within our district who were, you know, engaged in the work on a daily basis, on a yearly basis, and then ultimately to to hopefully move some of those folks through the the administrative continuum. And um, you know, I think it's been I think it's been a, a, a incredibly successful. And as a matter of fact, if I look out at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight administrators in the audience right now, all eight have been promoted. Um, in the past six years, so I, I think that that's a that's a testament to um, what we're doing with the opportunities for our folks, um, and that's not a plug that just happened to be as I looked out and can see that. Um, so I, I think that that's um, a, a strong testament to the work we're doing as a district to to grow our own. Um, a few reporting requirements. So we have our final class statistics for the class of 2017. So the total graduates for 2017 were 2,746 across our six high schools. We had 1,125 students who graduated through what's known as substitute competency assessments. Uh, what that means is they had certain scores on the SAT, ACT, and other other standardized assessments that replaced having to take PARC. Um, we had 16 students that graduated through the portfolio appeals process in either math or, or language arts, and we had 167 students that graduated through alternative, alternative requirements specified in their, their IEP. Uh, the total students that were denied graduation from the 12th grade class across the six high schools were seven, but all seven of those students are enrolled and on track to, to ultimately graduate, we're proud to, to note. Uh, the total number of students denied graduation from the 12th grade class because of failure to pass a high school end of course assessment was zero. Um, some interesting statistics, 92.9% .9 of our students are furthering their education in either a four or two year institution. 1.5% uh, of our graduating seniors are going on to serve the, the armed forces. 4.4% uh, of our, our graduates are, are, are moving right into the workplace. Um, and the class of 2017, and this is self-reported data, but it's, it's important data, earned over $84 million in scholarship money. So I think that's a, a testament to how well that, that class performed. And we also have the, um, on the agenda this evening, the approval of the anti-bullying bill of rights self-assessment. This is something that every district has to do through the Department of Education. And what it is, is it's, it's a rubric uh, you know, scored over se uh, eight different elements, totaling anywhere up to 78 total points. It's really designed around the specific types of trainings and opportunities that are offered in the district in order to uh, enact the um, anti-billing Bill of Rights in the most appropriate manner across the district. And so all, all of our schools are, 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 are well into the 70s in, in, in their self-assessments, which is uh, a testament to the, the, the good work that's going on with the ABR specialist uh, across the, the district. So we're proud of that. That concludes my report. The board reports, curriculum. Okay. We had a finance committee meeting back on August, I'm sorry. August 18th, I'm sorry, July 18th, July 18th. And basically what we did is Building and Grounds presented an update on the improvements to the Howell Athletic Field as Mr. Sampson had noticed. Um, in addition to that, um, they also basically just went over the fact that they're very happy with the performance of the contractor. And by September 1st, the project should be 100% complete. As a matter of fact, there were a couple of change orders made along the way with this project, and they're actually on the agenda for us to approve tonight. They amounted to about $5,000. Um, the one emergency of the summer was the boiler in this building, which has actually been here since 1959, but it's rotting from the inside out, and it can't get certified, and there's a lot of asbestos there. So the boiler has to be removed, which isn't easy. As a matter of fact, the DEP person has to be here the whole time that it gets taken out. Um, but a new boiler should last 50 years, and we're actually awarding it tonight. Uh, you'll see the uh, purchase and installation of that. 
boiler and the funding's coming from our capital reserves. And then what Building and Grounds did is they just went over all the summer projects at all the various schools. Mr. Sampson had talked about new paint. So what the Building and Grounds Department did is they just went through each school and told us uh, all the different projects that were uh, being worked on over the summer. Um, we also discussed the issue of the tennis courts at Marlboro which is gonna be a major issue down the road and it's not looking good for the, um, the tennis team being able to use those courts this year. So they're gonna to have to go to the Marlboro Swim Club for the practices and matches. And then just switching gears to the curriculum committee, we had our meeting tonight right before this meeting, uh, which was Ms. Howell's first meeting. Um, and Dr. Hazel was there and she introduced Shana and Oscar Diaz, um, who, was re who were recently put in place in curriculum and instruction. This was our first meeting with both of them. Um, and we just went over a comprehensive equity plan, which basically makes sure the policies and procedures are in line with legislation and regulations handed down from the state. Um, we're actually approving the statement of assurance tonight which is gonna be sent to the county superintendent. With respect to the IB program, obviously the last time we were at Freehold Township, we had a full update on that. Um, and it should be noted that when the staff here went out to different schools in New Jersey where they had an IB program, they were told, you know, don't worry if not every, like if no diplomas are handed out for this program and in fact, this year, 19 students got the diploma, so it really shows what a differentiated school district this is. Um, I mean, there's school districts out there which didn't have one a diploma handed out for the first three years of the program. So as was mentioned at the last meeting next year, they're looking at how well to start the IB program. And of course, the goal ultimately is to get it in all the buildings. And with respect to summer school, uh, the Summer Academy is ending August 11th, and that's both for original credit and for credit recovery. There was 168 students enrolled there. A vast majority of them are for original credit. Uh, 58 are registered or were registered for credit recovery, and it's good that this number is coming down. Back in 2015, there were actually 87 students in credit recovery, so it's good that that number is coming down. And with sticking with the uh, summer educational programs, the AP Summer Bridge program is gonna be starting. And we should point out that last year, every student who took it passed their course. And we actually have 241 students enrolled in AP Summer Bridge, which is 100 more students enrolled than last year. Uh, with respect to Computer Science Pathways Project, We've talked about this before, where year two of a five-year grant, there's 20 students enrolled for this for this coming school year, and it was nice to see that there's five females out of the 20. Uh, professional de development is ongoing with this program. They're also gonna begin to develop pathway number two, and they could consider something in health sciences for that project. And then we ended our curriculum committee meeting with some discussion about summer reading assignments. Um, obviously, students in various grades read the same book and we just talked about potential changes down the road and what that's all about. And that's it. Hello, we met on July 6th um, here at, at Pine Central Office. And everybody had a good laugh when I came in right off the um, from work in my lifeguard uniform. <laughs> but after we had a good laugh, we got uh, back to work. And um, there's a lot of policy changes in definition and wording. The first being the evaluation of the superintendent. The New Jersey State Board of Education recently adopted provisions. Effective educator. The only revision required in this policy is removed uh, from the written to the annual written performance report. The department proposes throughout the chapter to replace the word written performance report to the annual written performance report with the annual performance report. An annual performance report is the correct term to use when evaluating teaching staff members. 
The next revision, district mentoring, the New Jersey State Board. In this provision, the revision in the administrative code requires a few district mentoring program. The policy replaces the term core curriculum with the New Jersey student learning standards. In the next provision, 3223, 3224, the evaluation of administrators, including principals, vice principals, and assistant principals. The evaluations of the principals, vice principals, and the assistant principals have been revised by the New Jersey State Board. It's adopted at the NJAC Effective Educator. This chapter addresses the evaluation process for all teaching staff members, including classroom teachers, educational service staff members, including our school nurses, our guidance counselors, our child study team members, our library media specialists, including administrators, principals, vice principals, assistant principals, and principals. In this section, a lot of definitions changes. There are minor revisions in definitions. The new code deletes the term long observations and short observations. Now we use the word, several sections of the new code refer to the person as the superintendent to complete the evaluation to be the designated supervisor. So that's just a term, changes in the term the terminology. The next one, professional development for teachers and school learners. The New Jersey State Board, the revisions in the administrative code require revisions in the policy 3240 to be developed by October 31st if the teacher is new. If the teacher is hired before October 1st, his personal plan can be twice a year. In 560, suspension. In this revision, Chapter 45 was recently signed into law limiting the school's ability to expel or suspend a young person, a young student. It limits on out-of-school suspensions and expulsions in the school district. The school districts must implement early detection and prevention programs. Expulsion, PL 206, Chapter 45, was also recently uh, signed into law limiting school districts' ability to expel or suspend a young student. In this law, it places limits on the school district suspension and expulsions in the school. Policy Guide 560 has been revised to incorporate the limitations outlined in the new law. 8505, School Wellness and Nutrition. The school districts that are participating in this national school lunch program, school breakfast program, are required to develop local wellness policy. In July of 2016, the United States Department of Agriculture finalized finalized regulations to the Healthy Hunger Free Student Act. 8550, unpaid meals, outstanding food charges. School districts participating in the National School Lunch Program and the School Breakfast Program has been informed by the United States Department of Agriculture that it must have an unpaid meal charge policy in place for this coming school year. The policy must explain how the food service program will handle situations when the child cannot afford to pay. And that's it. Anything I missed? Thank you, Ms. Bruno. Thank you. Mr. Messenger, thank you. There's no policy. He did it. Okay. Um, now we're up to um, public session. Dominica Greco. Can you step to the mic so we can hear you, please? I just wanted to make a statement um, in, in favor of Dr. Greco. And I don't know if this is the right program to do it in, but I want to say something. Okay? My daughter has suffered from emotional disorders since third grade at the Katina Elementary School. By the time she entered Freehold Regional High School, after many psychiatric hospital stays and years of therapy, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and borderline personality disorder. If it was not for Dr. Brett Holman, she would have never made it through high school. He was her guy. 
guiding light as well as our parents' guiding light. During high school, there were many more hospital stays and various medication trials. And in her senior year of 2011, she had a long stay at High Focus. If it were not for Dr. Fred Holman, assistance, she would not have been able to graduate. We hold him in the highest esteem and have always found him to be of the highest integrity, professional, honest, kind, caring, and having the children welcome as his main priority. I hope this will end with Dr. Holman's reinstatement. Anything else to be completely service to the students of Brigham. Okay, um, I need a motion to take, well, there's a few changes. Right? Yes, let me, uh, so uh, the agenda issued had some space holders um, for some uh, bid in one situation and some finalization of insurance premiums in another. Um, that is on the back table now for um, H6, approval of property and liability insurance. Um, I-2, which is the bid award for a boiler replacement, and I-3 is approval of an appropriation from Capital Reserve to, uh, to fund the, the boiler replacement. In addition to that, I have um, some corrections. Uh, on G-3, approval of appointments. Um, under Heather Codron, add the uh, salary amount of 45460 She's a LTS B secretary appointment. That's under G3. Under G5, approval of honoraria. Change the honorary appointment of Stephen Janarone to uh, head coach girls basketball. <coughs> also, I have an addition to G7, which is uh, approval of change of status. The reappointment of Dr. David Bleakley on the April 28th agenda. Um, the new action would be to change from assistant principal at Freehold Township High School to principal at Marlboro High School. Uh, step one, salary of 163, 369, prorated per annum, effective September 1, 2017. And finally, um, a, an addition, uh, we'll call it this K4, um, and it reads, resolved by the board to adopt and approve the HIB report and to deny the parental appeal discussed in executive session. Uh, and that's from this evening, so that's an, an add to the existing agenda. Okay. I like a motion to take um, the rest of the agenda in one piece. Motion. G1 to K4. Second. second. Time for second. Any questions? Comments? <coughs> Roll call. Mrs. Canario? Yes. Mr. Carollo? Yes. Mrs. Fankhauser? Yes. Mrs. Lavin? Yes. Mr. Messinger? Yes. Mr. Moses? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes, I have to abstain from item G7. And the and um, G2. I have to abstain from um, Dr. Uh, his appointment at Marlboro. Uh, maybe not because you kicked my butt in triathlons. So I don't want any hard feelings, um, but because I'm a conflicted board member, but I wish you the best of luck at Marlboro. You'll be great. So just just for the roll call vote, it's it's G7 and G2. I said G7. Yes, and just and G2 as well. And G2, um, re retirement of um, Sean Boylan. Okay, so those abstentions G7 and, G2. and the balance of the agenda, Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mrs. Sotera? Yes. Okay. business new business new business so just like to um, I'd ask Michael Dillon to stand so uh, Michael is uh, has now been appointed as our new director of guidance and operations to replace Shana Howe 
Uh, Michael's been assistant principal with us at Manalpin High School since 2014, uh, really oversees the RLA program over there, uh, came to us as, as an administrator in, uh, from a special needs school, has done an ex some excellent work here in the district, and, and we think he'll be a, a very strong addition to the central administration. So Michael, congratulations. That's, that's the first acceptance speech we ever had. Um, Dr. Bleakley, if you, if you could stand. So uh, we're also appointing David Bleakley tonight uh, as the principal of Marlboro High School. So David um, originally came to the district from Jackson High School as a social studies teacher. Uh, ultimately was a so social studies at Freehold Township High School, was then a social studies and world language supervisor at Freehold High School. Uh, then was when we um, reimagined the Rays Academy, Dr. Hazel and I, back in 2012. Uh, David was the first individual to, that we appointed to, uh, to run the new, the new academy, did very well there for us uh, for, for a few years. Uh, and then we moved him over to Friel Township High School as, as an assistant principal. Um, I still remember uh, meeting Dr. Bleakley at a Barnes & Noble in 2012. And uh, he had a couple other job offers from a few other districts. I dealt with it and smirked a little bit and chuckled and said, uh, I think that if you see, take the long view here at Friel Regional High School District, it will work out for you well if you keep your nose to the grindstone. And, and I think those words uh, came to fruition. So David, I know you're gonna do an excellent job at Marlboro High School, so congratulations. Uh, Madam President, uh, there was no other uh, new business. Any other business? No. Go ahead. Okay, the, the board does have a need uh, to, to return to executive session. Uh, noting the uh, resolution, the, the wording, adopting the wording as peers, talking about uh, the open public meeting. Without rereading all that, Mr. Boyce. Uh, the board will be entering to uh, closed session to discuss certain items and uh, specifically uh, matters in, uh, concerning uh, negotiations and matters involving the employment, appointment, termination of employment, terms and conditions of employment, uh, and specifically uh, the renegotiation of the superintendent's contract. Uh, the board will return uh, to open session to conduct business. Uh, at the conclusion of the executive session, and is anticipated that the discussion will take uh, no longer than one hour, which means that the board will return to take action uh, no later uh, than 10 o'clock. Or, oh, excuse me, 8, 9.54. A motion to convene to executive? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam President, now that we're back in, in public session, uh, it, with your permission, I'll just uh, I'll read the, the board's resolution. Whereas the Freehold Regional High School District desires to maintain Mr. Charles Sampson in the position of superintendent, whereas the board and Mr. Sampson engaged in good faith negotiations for a new employment contract for Mr. Sampson to remain in the position of superintendent that be effective July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2022. Whereas pursuant to NJSA 18A, colon 7, 8-J, and NJAC 6A23A-3.1A. The board also forward the proposed employment contract for Mr. Sampson to continually serve as the superintendent to the interim executive county superintendent for Monmouth County for approval and has received written approval and notice from the interim executive county superintendent for Monmouth County that it has been determined that the proposed employment contract for Mr. Sampson is in compliance with the physical accountability, efficient and budgetary regulations. Whereas the approved new employment contract for Mr. Sampson replaces and supersedes all prior employment contracts, both ex express and implied between the parties hereto for the time period of the new employing contract, and by approving and signing the new employment contract, both the board and Mr. Sampson assent to a rescission of any and all prior contracts for the time period of the new employment contract, as well as to the agreement terms herein, except as noted and provided for in the new approved employment contract for Mr. Sampson. 
It is therefore hereby resolved that the board approves and adopts the employment contract for Mr. Charles Sampson to continue to serve as superintendent consistent with the terms and conditions set forth therein and as approved as the interim executive county superintendent for Monmouth County per NJSA 18A78-J and NJAC 6A23A-3.1A. need a motion. Motion. Second. Roll call. What, any discussion? Any discussion? Nope. Long overdue. Exactly. Yeah, Mr. Bruno, we'll have to. Oh, okay. it. Sorry. Roco? Mrs. Canario? Yes. Mr. Carollo? Yes. Mrs. Fankhauser? Yes. Mrs. Lavin? Yes. Mr. Messinger? Yes. Mr. Moses? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Stain. Mrs. Cetera? Yes. Motion carries. Yay. Thank you. I need a motion for adjournment. <laughs> second, first. No I say yes. Not motion. Uh, no. I heard a second. Okay. I haven't heard a second. 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 Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Aye. Aye.